Good evening, folks. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the 2 June Hampton Board of Selectmen meeting. Roman 1 Public Hearing RSA 41 colon 14 small a first hearing 1 acceptance and acquisition of 5.107 acre parcel map lot 96-2 delta-11 Great Gate Drive. Mr. Welch, could you please lead us through this? Mr. Chairman, uh, when Great Gate Drive was originally subdivided, this goes back a number of years. Uh, there was included within that subdivision a requirement for the subdivider to present to the town a, a 5.107 acre parcel which runs off Great, Great Gate Drive and also runs off Woodland Road. The area for Woodland Road provides the, uh, the outfall from Ellisbrook uh, and, and Creek that runs down through um, the Mill Pond and into Meadow Pond. Uh, which is the final run of, of that particular uh, waterborne creek and, and brook. Uh, this parcel is a wetlands parcel. It backs up to Great Meadows. Uh, the purpose of the hearing is to comply with the provisions of RSA 4114A, which allows the selectmen uh, to hold two public hearings and not, less, not more than 10 days after the second public hearing to actually vote on whether or not to acquire the property. We have, uh, in accordance with the statute, received comments from the Conservation Commission and from the Planning Board in favor of acquiring uh, that particular parcel. And I see the Chairman of the Planning Board here tonight who may address it as well. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. We'll go to questions from the Board and then we'll open the public hearing. Uh, Selectman Wilson? Selectman Griffin? Nothing. Okay, and at uh, 7.05, we open the public hearing. Are those wishing to speak? Mr. Diener, please. Good evening, and thank you, Jay Diener of the Canton Conservation Commission. Just very quickly, um, we have absolutely no reason to oppose um, acquiring this parcel of land. We think it's uh, instrumental to the town of Hampton. Uh, we think it's going to be uh, great for drainage um, coming off of Ice Pond. So uh, we heartily endorse this as per our letter to, to the board. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Further comment? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing at? 7.05 p.m. 7.05. Thank you very much. Roman 2, public comment period. Those wishing for public comment, please. Good evening. Uh, I'm Amy Hansen, resident, 98 Lock Road. I'm also a member of the Hampton Town Clock Committee, and I just wanted to remind everyone we have a lobster bait coming this Saturday to raise funds for the installation of the clock in front of Center School. We'll be hosting it, or the Historical Society will be hosting it at their grounds from 3 to 5 p.m. We have tickets available. They're $30 per person for steak or lobster, and $10 for the kids under 12. You get hamburgers or hot dogs. Um, we are still tirelessly working on the clock fundraising. Um, we have about $62,000 raised at or committed, and we're hoping to raise another 38000 for the installation. If anyone would like to learn more about it, you just visit us at the rec department. I'm also a town employee. Um, uh, we hope to get some signage up in front of Center School this summer. We'll be meeting with the school board in a few weeks to get that done. And uh, just like the community to be more involved that it is happening and um, just to be aware of where we are with our fundraising so they can participate any way they'd like to. Thank you. Can you send it. that to me as a JPEG? The, all of it? Yeah, oh, just that. The lobster yeah. bag. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. And you can get tickets at the rec department. You never met a lobster he didn't like. I, I, I met a, never met a lobster I liked. I don't like lobster. You can have steak. Jay Diener again. Um, on your way to the lobster bake on Saturday, there are two events that are taking place that you want to know about. Uh, the first is the rain barrel auction, um, which will be at 9 o'clock in Town Hall parking lot. Thanks to Aquarian Water Company, Wicked Awesome Paint and Wallpaper, and Wayne's Auto Body, um, we have green barrels that have been painted and seal coated by Donna Boardman's 8th grade students. They've been on display and will be on display for the rest of the week at Town Hall. 
they, as they have in the past three years, done a magnificent job of coming up with some very creative designs on these rain barrels, which will help people to manage stormwater coming off their roofs. So it's a great investment for your property and a great way to um, reward the students for their activities. Secondarily at the library, we will, with the assistance of a grant from the Rockingham Planning Commission and some help from the Seabrook Hampton Est uh, Estuary Alliance, be installing a demonstration rain garden. We've been talking about rain gardens in Hampton for a number of years. A lot of people are curious about them but don't really know what they are. This is a great opportunity to come down and see how one is built, to ask questions about it, learn more about it, even get your hands dirty if you're so inclined. So, and that will also be starting at 9 o'clock um, on the winning cut side of the Lane Memorial Library. So we encourage everybody to come down and join us for these two wonderful activities on Saturday morning. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Further public comment, please. Seeing none. Roman three announcements and community calendar. Selectman Wilson. Um, Jay beat me to the punch because I was going to mention the rain barrels as well. I'm still astonished at what the young people did. Um, number two, um, the please may the <laughs> public works department put a notice on the website when there's a holiday as to whether or not they're going to do the regular collection days. I'm just getting a little bored with having poor people have to call me. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, Memorial Day and Fourth of July, the, the uh, old message is still there on the uh, website. If somebody would be kind enough to update that website so people would know, so they're not saying, what do I do on the Fourth of July? Do I put my barrels out on Memorial Day or whatever? Because that tends to be a big issue. Um, and also the school, the school um, <coughs> programs that are being hosted right now on Channel 22 and 13. There has been a problem with the sound. It was not the school's problem. There was something in the system. Don't ask me to explain it. But Paul has sorted out whatever the glitch was because people are trying to watch, but they're very frustrated when there's no sound or the sound is not well done. So apparently the issue has been cleared. You can all turn on and watch all of the school programs and it should be fine. Thank you, ma'am. Sir. Um, I just would like to uh, wish Dick DeRocher, who's a tireless uh, volunteer for the town of Hampton, he's been very ill <coughs> lately and hopefully he's getting better and getting out of the hospital soon. So. He was, you know, at the Energy Commission and the uh, 375th and lots of the Budget Committee, so he's a good volunteer, so we need him to get better, get well soon. Thank you, sir, and welcome back. Yes, sir. I have nothing. Okay, thank you. Nothing. Okay, great. Uh, I'm just going to step out of uh, order just a bit, but Tim and I went down to the opening of the uh, Church Street pump station last week, and I, and I must tell you, and I'll, I'll hold up the schematic, but... Uh, that new uh, pump station takes virtually all of the effluent from the main beach, uh, pumps it down to Church Street and right underneath the marsh, uh, and allows this beach and this community to conduct commerce, to live, to dwell here in a really remarkable way. And I asked uh, Mr. Noyes, the director for public works, to, to give a brief synopsis. And, and it's a magnificent, magnificent facility pumps 3,000 gallons a minute, has that capability. We received, as Jim knows and, and the rest of you know, a $50,000 energy conservation check from Unitil. They were on board. Wright Pierce did a fantastic job. Uh, Mr. Welch, uh, in coordinating with uh, Director Noyes, superlative, and I'll read the narrative that was sent, but really speaks coming on the heels of Public Works Week and what that department does. It's our largest department and what an extraordinary job Director Noyce does, what an extraordinary job the taxpayers do, the elected leadership in this town to respond to professional advice. But I'll just read this, and, and it was so, uh, so impressive, uh, and that former station was so decrepit mm. and, and so uh, much on the borderline of paralyzing and shutting down that beach uh, at any instant that, that it was done, and he worked well with uh, Mr. Welch on that. Church Street Pump uh, Station report. The original Church Street Pump station was built in 1935. Upon inspecting the station in 2012, I found that, this is Mr. Noyes, I found the station to be in extremely poor condition, unsafe, inefficient, and unreliable. 
I briefed the town manager and expressed my concern with these conditions and recommended immediately proceeding with plans to replace the station. As was obvious, the rehabilitation of the plant was not possible. The town manager, Mr. Welch, was fully supportive. At that time, the town had another firm performing the engineering work on the wastewater system. I asked them to reevaluate or evaluate the plant and prepare a preliminary report for the cost to engineer, to manage the engineering, and to replace it. That came in at $6.2 million was the initial estimate. I feel so confident in Mr. Noy's capabilities that he was dissatisfied with that in working with Mr. Welch. Uh, that they felt that was much higher and that with the town manager's concurrence invited other interesting engineering firms to submit qualification statements on their experience. He did this, Wright Pierce came in, they uh, through Mr. Welch and the board they secured an SRF loan application, received the 3.104 loan for the project and working closely with Wright engineers they reduced engineering costs, construction management costs and from a 6.2 million dollar initial uh, estimate or bid from the former firm, Wright Engineers completed that on $3.297 million. So substantial taxpayer savings through Mr. Welch, through uh, Director Noyes. In addition, Unitil was on board and say, uh, presented a check uh, for $50,000. And the corporate, the uh, saving, saving measures, which lowers the actual cost of this project from the preliminary budget, was three, uh, the savings of $3.2 million. So extraordinary work by Mr. Welch, extraordinary work by uh, Director Noyes. And I just wanted to share that. Thank you very much. Mr. Welch, do you have any? Sir, no, you did a terrific job. Thank you. No question. Roman four, consent <coughs> agenda. A motion, please. I will so move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Um, we reading them for Would the public, you? just so they yeah, we should. the public at home knows. Let's have uh, Mr. Griffin read. Number one is donation from the Babe Roof League for an electronic scoreboard. Number two is requalification of veterans tax credits. Number three is termination of lease land lease at 38 Ocean Boulevard. Number four is a new leased land lease at 38 Ocean Boulevard. Number five is parade and public gathering license. Uh, there are two of those. Number six is license for coin operated amusements. There are two of those. Number seven is taxi applications. Uh, and number eight is a dance hall permit and pool uh, table permit. There are two of those. Uh, number nine is a pool table permit. And number 10 is permission of, uh, for outside patio. Uh, there are two of those, 10 and 11. Thank you, sir. We have, a, we have a motion. We have a second. It has been read. All those in favor? Okay. Unanimous. Thank you. Roman 5 appointments. One, Donna Bennett, tax collector, a 2011 tax deed. Ma'am, thank you. Um, I'm here for my annual tax deeding meeting, which actually should be next Monday, but y'all aren't meeting, so I'm here a week early. Um, and I'm asking, as I usually do at this time of the year, to come in and extend the deeding um, until September 22nd, which would mean that all the homeowners that haven't paid up to that date would need to be re-notified 30 days prior, and their mortgage companies would also have to be re-notified. Um, I've given you an updated list. You can see we've got a few payments in, not a lot. Currently there are 42 properties on the list still here. And in the past, when I've asked for these um, extensions, we have been able to collect almost all of them. We get the list down to about 10 that we really have to make decisions on later on in the year. So um, I am asking again for an extension to September 22nd. Thank you, ma'am. Selectman Wilson. Questions? No, thank you. Like Mike Griffin? For what are you doing? No. Thank you. Nothing. Any questions? A motion? I'll make a motion. I'll second that. Two. Okay, two. Extend. Extend the. Uh, the until what date? September 22nd. September 22nd. I'll second. All those, second. In, all those in favor? Unanimous. Thank, thank you, you very much. Good night. Approval of minutes. 12 May 2014. I will so move that we adopt the minutes of May 12, 2014. Any corrections? I have a yes, ma'am. Quick correction on page two. 
Um, in about the middle of the page, it says, Selectman Woolsey moved to deny the two recommended 2013 abatement denials. It should be to affirm the two recommended 2013 abatement denials, just confirming what the uh, assessing officer had done. Thank you, ma'am. That's all that I can. Any I, further? I nitpicked, and that was all I could find. Any further comments on 12 May? All those in favor? Unanimous. And I will so move we adopt the minutes of May 19, 2014. Any amplifications, modifications, or changes? A second? Second. Um, yeah. All oh, those that's in right. Sorry. Yes, a second. All those in favor? Okay. Unanimous. Thank you. Abstention. Yes. Yeah. We weren't here. Missed that. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. With uh, three in favor, two abstentions. Welcome back, men. Uh, Roman 7, Town Manager's Report. Mr. Welch, please. Mr. Chairman, members of the Board. Uh, this week begins every other week meeting scheduled for the Board of Selectmen for the summer season. Please remember the Selectmen's agenda closes at 5 p.m. the Wednesday preceding the meeting at which the item will be considered. The open house and dedication of the Church Street sewer pump station was conducted on May 29, 2014. Paving of the parking area at the station will be accomplished later in the summer. The construction of the laboratory at the Church Street parking lot has been completed and will be committed to service when the lot opens this summer. Yay! <laughs> uh, the town has been notified by the Solid Waste District um, that our tipping fee for turnkey landfill will increase from 72.61 to 73.26 effective July 1st. And for municipal, that's for municipal solid waste, and from 87.79 to 88.44 for construction and demolition materials effective 7.1. Both increases are 1.5 percent, which is the average increase the Boston Consumer Price Index for the preceding year. The town still has vacancies in the following municipal committees: one on the cable TV committee, uh, one on the energy committee, one on the leased land committee, one on the mosquito control committee one on the Recycling and Education Committee, and one on the Rockingham Metropolitan Planning Organization Technical Advisory Committee. I hope I don't have to read that one again. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have submitted to the board in, in the handout this past week a, uh, a draft warrant article uh, to complete the paving on Belmont, Fairfield, and Ruth. That did not make, uh, that made the budget last year, but the, the fall budget passed instead of the regular budget, so the work is, we're going to be going into our third year if we don't complete this. Uh, and it needs to be done so people can have a road to drive on. It's, it's not going to cost them an arm and a leg to fix their cars. It costs about $90,000 to, to pave those three roads. That's the last part of the project that needs to be done. The um, Great General Court, along with our governor, has signed into law uh, Senate Bill 219. Uh, which becomes Chapter 71 of the Acts of this year relative to funds received for the sale of cemetery lots. It's a general enabling act and uh, it probably will not go into effect until January 1, but we haven't received the actual signed copy yet, but it was a bill as uh, this board authorized to be submitted to the legislature. So it is, it is now signed by the governor and uh, will become something in the statutes coming this coming year. The Hampton Victory Garden, um, our public works people, sewer and drain staff, <coughs> have been down there cutting down some trees on the west side of the garden. Uh, this is an area directly behind the old blacksmith shop. Uh, they've also starting to work on the, uh, the old cooperage, which is down there. There's a hole in the building. They're fixing that. Uh, they're planning on removing and pulling stumps on the west side of the garden. Uh, and they've been meeting periodically to review the progress. So we hope that project will be done in the next week or so. They're doing it as time allows. Uh, and hopefully the folks at the Victory Garden can uh, can uh, have a, uh, a wonderful summer of productive gardening. Um, Mr. Chairman, we have a request from the um, Winnicott High School uh, for Tuesday, June 3rd, 7 p.m. Uh, there will be a jazz band and concert. Uh, chamber singers will perform a concert at the Seashell Stage on Ocean Boulevard, Hampton Beach. Please come and support the students' efforts. Uh, we would like to afford them parking at the um, Ashworth Avenue parking lot so that uh, they can go down, do their, uh, their presentation, and uh, uh, be able to go home without having to pay an arm and a leg to get that done. 
this is for the high school and the students. More things. I hope not. The budget has been submitted to departments. Uh, they are to have the budget back uh, for work uh, in my department in the relatively near future. Uh, we're committing to have the budget to the Board of Selectmen so that they can, they can start working on the budget. Uh, and that's going to be on the 22nd of, of August. <coughs> so you have the budget back in your possession on that date to begin, begin meeting with our department heads to, uh, to review the budget. And that's it, sir. Thank you, sir. Questions for the town manager. Selectman Wilson. So we will no longer have a holy cooperage. That's the plan. Um, and I really want to thank Fred for his efforts to get that bathroom in at the Church Street parking lot shed. I appreciate that tremendously, and I'm sure you will be thanked, uh, mentally thanked, uh, huh. right through the summer. Um, on the budgets, once again, and I, I try this every year, I want to hear what the department heads really want and really feel that they need. And if they're, uh, and I understand that it's, it's tricky trying to get the, the budget set up, even if they give us an addendum on the side mm -hmm. of extras that maybe they didn't feel quite bold enough to put in the budget figures, but things that they, they have in their mind, uh, I mean, like sitting here since 1935 or 32 or whatever it was with that Pump Street station. There, there, are, there are things that are going to have to be done, and I would like to hear directly from the department heads as to their focus and their needs going forward into the new year. Thank you, ma'am. That's it. Yes, ma'am. Sir. No, thank Sir. you. I think it's a great idea that we, we need to have we need to be able to see what their vision is of what they have what as we move forward we as a town need to and, and the public needs to see that what what our department heads are thinking as far as what needs to be replaced uh, I know we have the CIP and stuff like that but there are there's that other stuff that falls through I mean we obviously know we need to fill the fire uh, Inspect inspectors position right. Um, but what else is out there that we don't know? It would be nice to at least see that. I mean, we're not probably going to get it all this year. I'm sure we're not. But it's nice to know that it's looking down the road and what we're seeing at. So the public has a right to know what we're looking down the road. The only other one question I had is if, uh, if when you're talking to Keith, could you make sure he goes over and takes a look at the uh, bridge on Old Stage Road? The hot uh, top we, over there. We've already discussed it. Okay. And he's planning on taking care of it later this year. Very good. Very good. If uh, if anybody hasn't been over there, yeah. it's a great go over to Old Stage Road. There's this great little treasure over there. Is a covered bridge, and if you want a nice peaceful place to just go over and look, it is. We need to put a little hot top there, but other than that, it's a really great place. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, not much. I just want to uh, reiterate on the uh, Church Street Pump Station. What a great job Fred and, and right. Keith did and how, how uh, efficient that place is and how it's going to work so well and how it came in under budget. I think that's just super. And Fred, you did a great job. And you and Keith and coordinating the whole thing was great. Really Thank good. you. Thank you, sir. Roman 8, Old Business. Selectman ah. Wilson. Uh, talking about CIP, gentlemen. I, I don't know how many of you have looked through the <laughs> pile of paperwork that Fred gave us related to the CIP. But we are going to have to sit down. I am hoping we can take an evening. I know everybody wants to get out and you don't want to be here and you don't want to be here every, every other week and the summer and all this wonderful stuff. But I think we'd better get ourselves in order and sit down and start taking a look at this. You have me down as your representative of the Capital Improvement Committee. Um, I think it's a waste of time. I think it has been a waste of time unless we're willing to step forward and make a presentation to the planning board uh, as to exactly where we're going and what we need because I am exasperated with what I'm seeing on there. 
First of all, I had no information at all of anything to do with the police department. And it might either I was shortchanged, Fred, or they're not there. I have public works, I have fire, I have recreation, but I didn't have anything on the PD. Fire department. Every 10 years, the ISO report comes out. So far, we've maintained our status as a class three town. Rusty can relate to this. Hopefully, we should be fielding nine to, nine to 15. I know 15 is gonna get everybody excited, but at least nine to 15 men per shift. We are manning that beach station with three bodies, three bodies. And you're talking about being nervous about what happens in the summer around mm -hmm. here and the races and all the other stuff going on. No fire inspector yet. That position should never have been discontinued. And we do have in the warrant, finally, 20 years later, to replace the 1988 pumper. Uh, I read the chiefs, and I, I just get the ambulance out of there. That's a capital... Uh, that's a revolving fund article. Get it out. The pumper needs to go on the warrant as a single article next year. And the um, technical special hazards unit, I don't know, I have a question in my mind about that, mainly because um, I'm tired of Hampton funding all this stuff for, for all the other towns. Public works. We've got to go through the rolling stock. I still see, I think, a couple of old junkers over there. Fred? Yeah, Am wait, I seeing wait, old sweeper we'll, stuff? Those, going bye -bye? And those, those are gone. Uh, well, they were still there last time I was there a week ago. Well, and we've got to get rid of that stuff. And never again should we buy, be buying pickup trucks to plow. I'm sorry, but that's stupid to put pickup trucks out there to plow. Um, we and we've got to do a wash down shed. We have got to do a wash down shed, unless you know if your sewer line freezes in the middle mm -hmm. of the winter and there's ice in the in the uh, jet truck. Then too bad, I suppose. I want to see us literally, gentlemen, go through this rolling stock. And then the outfall pipe, gentlemen, and sewer bonds. John Hangen, when he was still here, and now we're talking four, five, whatever years ago. It's been a while. His estimate to construct an outfall pipe from the wastewater treatment plant out into the ocean. You know what the Seabrook outfit does. They've had to put their tunnels out into the ocean. His estimate at that time was $10 million. That's going to be a project, bringing it from the wastewater treatment plant down. Actually, Phil just showed you the diagram for the Church Street line and the sewer line. We have not put forward a warrant article, except for the private petition article for Woodland Road. We have not put forward a sewer construction and reconstruction article. And actually, never mind construction. We have our hands full with reconstruction. We are going to have to plan for sewer bonds, sewer reconstruction bonds, at five-year intervals. That was the, the goal in 1986. The first bond passed. I'm lucky. I got sewer. Mill Road and Little River were sewered. God help them, Rusty, on the West End, I, you know, whenever that's going to happen. We have got to get a, an orderly system of sewer construction and primarily reconstruction bonds. The, the sewer infrastructure is failing. I talk about the pump station. You've got stuff all underneath the, road, uh, underneath the roads in this town. All failing, all letting water infiltrate, which causes a greater burden on the a wastewater treatment plant, and we have got to cut this out. We've got to go through that list. Um, I, I do agree with Fred's comment, by the way, on the glass and the town office building. That's good. We've got to go through and nitpick and get some of the useless stuff off, like rebuilding five corners with a runaround or whatever it was, and get some serious projects in there so the public knows and we know and the planning board and the committee know where the heck we're going because we're stalling, we're sitting still, and everything is falling apart around us. And I am really, really annoyed. If we lose our ISO rating, the property, the property um, premiums, and you know this, on insurance, and every property owner in this town will go up. I would like to see, Fred, please, uh, I know... Uh, 
Um, Mr. Uh, wait a minute here. There we go. Uh, Mike Schroetzer was in with his rebundling some of the debt. Um, I'd like to know specifically where in our debt service schedule what's coming off. I don't think I understood that from what he uh, what he was proposing, but I think we need to know that. And SRF is another situation. The state is dribbling, and in, in a couple of years just dried up uh, money that's owed us from the SRF. That's revenue. That's money that we're entitled to to come from the state. And I think we should send a serious, mean demand to the state to get going and start sending that SRF money back to this town. Maybe the other towns aren't annoyed, but I'm certainly annoyed. Uh, I think we've got hard work ahead of us. I would like to take a whole evening. You're not going to like me for that. Too bad. But I think we need to get our ducks in a row before this fall on the CIP entire proposal, the entire plan, and we better do it fast. There. Thank See, you, ma'am. See, it's your fault. You, you recognize me. Thank it's you, ma'am. Uh, any further comment? No, Thank I you. will have more in the future. Select them different. Yes. Um, I would like to, um, at some point, and I'm not suggesting any time in the immediate future, but I would like to, uh, to find out what are the expected increase in revenue that will be coming from the new tax streams that we have with new construction and everything going on. I'd like to really get some type of a lowdown on what does that amount to? What is the difference between last year and this year, and possibly what's going to happen the year after? So where will we get all that information, Mr. Welch? We will have a <coughs> the assessing department prepare that. They, they can give us some re really reliable estimates. We have a number of important facilities that have been just placed into service, so we'll have good figures on those right away. Uh, the other ones that are building are quite compatible to what's already out there and we should be able to estimate fairly reliably on the basis of what's already there. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Not a problem. You know, I, with, with Mary Louise, I agree with you on, on the pickup trucks, but you've you got to remember you still need some pickup trucks. We have some, such small streets in this town that you're not going to get a big. But okay. we, have right. we have way too many. I, oh, yes. I totally agree. But you need to have some because of okay. some of be a few. Yep. Right. Yep. Not 18, Mr. Uh, Bryan. Well, well, that's 19. Um, no. 19. God <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's what I'm saying. But I, I can see us taking some time. And the way our meetings have been going, we could take some time after one of our meetings or instead of p putting on a separate night, if you, you feel. I mean, yeah, however we want to do it. I mean, I think we should take a look at it. So, Thank you, sir. As always, I agree with Mary Louise. And I still love you, Mary Louise. Don't worry. But I think we really should long-range plan. We should go through the CIP. Yes, I not quite agree with Oliver, but I think it would be a good idea, and I think we should take an evening to do it. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, there are uh, union under all business. There are, uh, and it's, of course, forthcoming. There is uh, union negotiations coming up. Uh, I've spoken with Mr. Welch. I've spoken with uh, key department staff to include finance to, to echo and mirror your interrogatories. Uh, Selectman Griffin, to ascertain exactly how much new revenue is coming in with the added stream for, say, like Smutty Nose, the projects at the beach, State. and the I increase in tax revenues, and balance those. And, and of course, everyone's got a wish list for equipment, for positions, for uh, uh, infrastructure improvements. And, and of course, uh, it's a four legged chair. There's the taxpayer, and of course, we had the uh, um, tax collector in here today. There's, uh, there's challenges for people in this economy that uh, um, it remains fragile, and we want to be sensitive to that. Uh, and it's great to have um, all the things you want on a wish list. We have employees, and it's they've been lean years the last four or five years. And the economy, especially in a working class town, has has been very challenging. And then we've got uh, our infrastructure in, in our uh, operating expenses. So we look at those. So, Selectman Griffin, I applaud you for for uh, adding. Uh, another dimension, another request to that, and we'll, we'll put that up and actually take a look at how much new money is coming into the town that wasn't here two years ago or last year. So that is uh, a good news story. New business, um, Roman 9. Well, yes, ma'am. Just one, one more comment. When I started working with the Budget Committee in 1982, 
we were allocating in the town budget $100,000 a year for constructing sewers. Capital outlay in the back of the budget, go back in the records and look at it. And we decided that that wasn't very smart since we were into the 1980s and nothing was being done. So we passed the first sewer bond. That was a very uh, unified effort on the part of the Board of Selectmen and the Budget Committee. I chaired the Budget Committee at the time. It worked very well. We got that bond through and the idea was for $7.8 million bonds at five year intervals, four or five of them, overlapping. You'd peak at one point, but then you'd start going downhill as you paid off the 20 year bonds. And the first bond passed very handily. In 1991, the then Board of Selectmen chickened out because the economy wasn't too good. Well, what do you think you're going to pay now? What do you think you're going to pay now with stuff falling apart around us? We have got to plan. Thank you, ma'am. Roman 9, New Business. Selectman Wilsey. The Hampton Beach State Park Fair, I guess Fred is helping them sort out the applications or whatever they needed to file. I'm opposed to it. And I want to ask if, uh, and maybe council knows, if they intend to go forward with a petting zoo, which concerns me tremendously, I'd like to know if anybody is going to be on site to see to the care of the animals. And I'm not kidding. And in summer, in the heat. And also there is a risk for youngsters sometimes uh, at, with petting zoos with some diseases and I can't name them that might be passed uh, to young people from, from handling uh, animals. So I want to know if at least uh, as part of the um, agreement, if this board is agreeable to letting this go forward <coughs> and issuing the public gathering license, that someone is responsible somewhere during the operation of this thing to make sure that the animals are cared for and not at risk. Okay, and, and thank you for that opening salvo and what we can, <laughs> what, and we're going to come back to the board uh, and, and we'll have Mr. Welch uh, brief uh, is the situation as he knows it and we'll go to town council. Mr. Welch, please. Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, <coughs> We notified the applicants here that they needed uh, two things immediately. One was a uh, public gathering license, parade and public <coughs> gathering license, because they're abutting a, a, a public highway mm -hmm. and the law requires that license to be issued by the Board of Selectmen and, and no one else. Um, we also informed them that they need a variance from the Zoning Board of Adjustment because the activity, at least the, the activity they're carry, or proposing to carry on uh, with mechanical rides mm -hmm. is prohibited in the zoning ordinance under Section 3.14. They have filed for that variance, and the zoning board is meeting on the 12th to consider it. Um, having talked with council, uh, having talked with or at least emailed with the applicant, I've tried to make it very clear uh, to the applicant that uh, they need to have both of those permits if they intend to move forward. Uh, the Board of Selectmen controls one, the Zoning Board controls the other. Uh, Council has prepared a draft uh, motion for you with regards to the parade and public gathering license um, that will tie in the mechanical amusement rides and the zoning ordinance and the requirement for a variance. And um, that is the only way that can be issued. Uh, and they need to have both documents uh, completed and taken care of in order to hold the activity. As far as the animals are concerned, um, I'll talk to the chief tomorrow and uh, we will inquire of the, of the animal control officer and see what his recommendations are and how he wants to approach uh, any of the um, private nonprofit corporations that specialize in this and, and consult with them and perhaps involve them. Excellent. Thank you. Esquire. Uh, yes, um, I wanted the public and the board to note that the uh, not first knowledge that uh, the manager had of, of this activity planned for June 19 to 22 was a letter from the uh, president, a uh, CEO of Fest Events of New England, uh, a private entity uh, that arrived on May 15th. Uh, so we're attempting to deal with the issues involved here in rapid pace. 
uh, doing the best we can. Uh, last year's event, as it was portrayed in a letter to the to the board, uh, came from uh, the Division of Parks and Recreation of the State of Dread uh, two months before. So there was greater notice. Uh, the event uh, appeared to be last year much smaller in sc scale. Mm -hmm. This this event here, organized and managed by Fiesta Shows of Seabrook, is um, at least on its face, uh, a much a much bigger affair, and certainly privately uh, managed. Uh, it is under license from Dread under some new licensing regulations that just went into effect, and the particular license was granted March 6th. But we were not informed of this until more than two months later. So uh, we're doing the best we can. The the the. Uh, Fest events and fiesta shows have indeed done as we've asked, that is to apply for the parade and public gathering license um, and also have applied for the variance. So we're getting that much cooperation, but uh, of course there's no guarantee that the variance is going to be granted. It's a separate board. And so that is why uh, in the motion that I've prepared for you, um, it makes the parade and public gathering license contingent upon receipt of the variance. And if the variance is not granted, then the parade and public gathering license would be void. The uh, zoning ordinance provision involved actually dates back to 1973. It was very specific back then as to what rides were, were prohibited, uh, such as the whip, as it was called, merry-go-round. Um, in 2007, uh, the ordinance, the zoning ordinance, uh, received a, a rewrite, and now the prohibition is is more general to mechanical amusement rides, and that's prohibited in all zones. Um, if this were a purely governmental activity, there might be a question as to whether or not zoning ordinance applies, but. Uh, it's not just the fact that even that it's government licensed from dread. It's not a traditional governmental activity. It's it's a private activity, for profit, and our townspeople have spoken that they don't want the the uh, mechanical amusement rides. And so until they speak otherwise, I think uh, incumbent on us to enforce it. Thank you, sir. Before we go around the room, uh, if we could just keep our comments to our Board of Selectmen domain. You do represent the Zoning Board, is that correct? Um, I do provide them advice, yes. And, and you, so you represent that. If we can keep, uh, the motion does uh, uh, reference them, but if we can keep our comments and our questions to Selectmen's matters. Mr. Griffin, please. Um, just so that the public knows, where is all, does this money go to? It goes to the money being raised here? Um, <coughs> the the licensing entity, which is DREAD, receives, according to the permit, approximately $3,000 plus 20 percent of all rides. Beyond that, the money raised goes entirely to private entities. Mm -hmm. So basically, this is something that the, where the state's trying to uh, raise some money. Correct. Yeah. I just hope in the future that um, we can make it more seamless than um, so that they automatically would, would know what needs to be done uh, and maybe that you could give them some counseling on what what they need to know because I uh, it's too bad that it has to sound so avisor you know but that we're automatically against it or whatever um, I would like to work a little closer with the state yeah. Had had we had more notice, that could have been accomplished. R really, we're literally dealing with it uh, as quickly as we can. Because they are our partner, uh, certainly, rather than our adversary. Certainly. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I have no problem with this is worded, but in a way, I uh, I got to agree with Rick. I think I think at some point we need to ha sit down with the commissioner of dread and find out what, how can we get a better working relationship. It always seems like they're just telling us this is what they're going to do. So, and then we have to fight with them. So I think we need to have, have a working relationship with them, have a meeting with them, 
bring them in. Let's see what we can do to try to get this thing on, on keel. So we, we're not at an adversarial position. We're at a, a working position. I think that's I think that needs to be done at some point. Thank you, sir. Mr. Waddell. I think Rusty and Rick have both have good concerns. I think from the aspect of people knowing what to do on, on, on uh, licenses and stuff, you can find that out pretty easily. I, I, I fault the organizers for not going and finding out what the ordinances are and stuff because I know working with the Rotary Club and doing Reach the Beach uh, beer tent down there, that when I first was in charge of that, I went and checked everything that you had to do and, and it was not hard to find those, that information. You go to the state website and stuff. So I, I, I fault the organizers for not getting their, they're doing their homework mm. and getting this stuff. I'm all in favor of this, and I think it's a great thing, and I, and I think we should help them do it. But I think all the people that are coming in here wanting to do something should do their homework Correct. and figure out what they're doing and how they're doing it. Thank you. Uh, Jay, yes, ma'am. Real quick follow-up. Yes, ma'am. What about posting a bond, by the way? And who's going to inspect these rides? Uh, this, you this hear about people <coughs> being stuck at the top of the Ferris wheel, and then the fire department has to get them down, or you know, what what about uh, safety here? There, there, there were will be uh, special details, both for police and fire. And last year, when this event was held, in talking to the fire yeah. chief, they did in fact do inspections of rides. Uh, just as you're suggesting. Okay. And so that was covered. In terms of insurance, like all other activities, um, and you'll see attached to the parade and public gathering license are major insurance coverages in which the town as well as the state are listed we're, as we're insured. Identified and, and would yes. be made whole if there is a problem. Yes. Obviously, we'd rather not have problems right. in the first instance. But obviously, we'd rather have insurance. Uh, both. Okay. Anything else, Selectman Wilson? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Welch, uh, Attorney Gerald, and, and to your department heads, uh, this was a late request. It's a quantum change from last year. We're mm -hmm. shifting from a public enterprise to a private enterprise. And quite frankly, uh, uh, as you gear up for the summer, Mr. Welch, your department heads, your town council, the command element is devoting an extraordinary amount of time to provide a way forward to, to, to see if this can happen. And of course, we don't speak for the Hampton Zoning Board of Adjustment. Uh, so I want to thank you uh, and, and your department heads and your employees for doing that. There was a motion. I'll make a motion to hereby to move to approve the parade and public gatherings license for the Hampton Beach State <coughs> Park Fair applied for by Fiesta Shows for June 19th to the 22nd, 2014, subject to the condition that a variance from Section 3.14 of the Hampton Zoning Ordinance that prohibits mechanical amusement rides in any zone is obtained for this location from the Hampton Zoning Board of Adjustment prior to the event start date. If such variance is not obtained prior to the event start date, then this parade and public gatherings license shall be void. Second. A second by Mr. Bridal. All those in favor? Whoop, whoop, whoop. Will I offend counsel if I ask to have the uh, animal control officer uh, inserted in there to supervise the petting zoo. Will you get really upset with me if I move to amend that? Um, I think perhaps it would be best just to have uh, Mr. Welch find out from the animal control officer exactly what they would, how they how they want to view the subject. I I understand your objection, but I <coughs> don't have the expertise to. I, my concern is to go through him because this is going to be on state property and because it's going to be on state property there may be state regulations that govern that particular area and I want to make sure that those are complied with and they may have a state officer who's going to have to do the inspections. Would there be a problem then inserting either state or town supervision of the petting zoo as being a condition? As, as you wish, as the board wishes. Uh, it, there's a motion if you wish to make uh, an amendment to the motion, and we'll vote on that. The floor is yours. I did. I'll move to amend that either a state a representative or a representative from the town uh, related to animal control is uh, included in supervision of that petting zoo as is a condition of putting that in place. Is there a second to the amendment? Seeing none, back to the original. I'll tell the SPCA and all of you. 
Back to the original uh, motion. Uh, there's there's a, uh, a motion. There's a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Oh, pardon me. I Four. Want it noted in the record, please, Mr. Chairman. Absolutely opposed. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely opposed. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Esquire, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it, sir. Thank you. Roman 9, new business number two. Petition request to schedule a public hearing regarding the Mill Pond Dam. And, Chief, if you can just grab a seat, and then we're going to give you plenty of time in the mic. And I'd like Mr. Welch to provide a synopsis. And then the floor will be yours, sir, to include reading your full uh, submission that you, you presented to the board, sir. Mr. Chairman, uh, the board received a, a letter. Um, actually, it's a letter of petition. Uh, dated April 10, 2014, which was brought into the town office on 5-22-14 with pages of signatures of different residents requesting that the Board of Selectmen hold a public hearing with regards to the status of the, of the Grist Mill Dam, also known as the Mill Pond Dam, and I'm sure we mm -hmm. There are a few other names that go associated with that, but uh, uh, this is a historic uh, location in town, and, and uh, a, pre a prior board had uh, suggested that, uh, in fact, a public hearing be held. Uh, that was not done, um, and I think probably you just need to bite the bullet, so to speak, and let people come and talk and explain their, 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 their problems with what's going on or, or their favoritism of what's going on. and, and uh, hold the hearing that was promised and then go forward. Thank you, sir. Chief, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, all members of the board. Um, Norm Hurley, actually uh, former chief, but that's all right. The letter actually is twofold, and one is that uh, it is a request to, to get back to let the public have some input on, on this. Uh, and it is really a request that we actually try to form some, some way to work through this that is both am amicable for the town. We understand the cost restraints, and we're well aware of that. We're not looking to try and drive up anybody's bill, but we are trying to uh, keep that area pretty much the way it is or, or improve the area um, and adhere to the Department of Environmental Services uh, requirement to uh, lower the hazard of the dam. There were several options that were shown. Um, we really didn't have enough time to absorb it because most of the time, the only thing we heard was that one night of explanation, and then we were told there would be another public hearing. It didn't happen. It was moved uh, to put it on a petition article shortly thereafter. Um, we would like the opportunity to work with the board, with the uh, with the town manager, with um, the the uh, the whole group, and and basically try to come up with a workable solution. Um, that meets, again, meets the requirements. Um, but the other part of the letter was also that if we're going to apply for federal or state grants, that you need to also meet the requirements of the CFR 106, which is uh, historic places, uh, anything that's uh, eligible or on the National Registry. Uh, and the dam, the pond, and the Grismal are all eligible to be on the National Registry. Um, and CFR 106, which I really I stated in the letter, uh, that both the state and the, and the uh, federal government says if you're going to um, get any grant money from either organization, you're required to do this full study uh, for historic places. And in that being said, if the state and, and the federal government thinks it's a good idea, I would think the town of Hampton would also think it would be a good idea as well to complete a study to find if there's an alternative. Uh, we are more than willing. Um, to, you know, we would like to see the whole town get involved with this, try to come up with a workable solution. I know there was a warrant article which did pass uh, for 400000 I believe, to decondition the dam. Uh, we're well aware of that. Uh, we would like to try and figure out a way to work within budgets to try and get it, again, so that it works for everybody involved. And it is definitely a historic place for the town. Um, we've talked to the state, Nadine Peterson, who uh, works for the state, has given us direction on this. I attached a copy of uh, the requirements of CFR 106 to the letter we sent in, um, trying to basically prod everybody to kind of come along and work this out. Uh, by all means, we'd like to be a group to work with you. We're not trying to be an adversary to you at all. Thank you. Any further comments? Thank you. Selectman Wilson? The state's position on this, I thought that we were mandated to remove that. 
no. We're not mandated to remove it. We are mandated to take remedial action. To take remedial action. Thank you. That's a better term. Thank you, ma'am. Second so question. Um, I am in favor of uh, if there's anything that we can do to make this situation a little bit better, I would be in favor of it. Okay. And would you uh, be in favor of a public hearing and make a motion that we do hold one regarding this yes. matter? Yes. Prepared uh, to hear that motion? I'll make a motion that we, uh, when we have a public hearing which will be the second public hearing? Is this, am I correct? No. no. This the is the first. Not held. This is the okay, first public hearing. Okay, so this hearing. is the first public hearing on the, uh, on the Gress Mill Dam. Is there need second. to be two? Yeah. Do you have okay. a date? Two is not necessary. No, just one. Okay. And it's second by um, Selectman Waddell. And uh, we'll hold that as soon as the uh, town manager um, okay. advises us that we can do that. And I will say that in review of the uh, material that uh, Christina did forward us, there's three or four um, minutes that do reflect that mm -hmm. we, the, these these abutters and, and these taxpayers and these Hampton citizens were told they that we would have one. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Roman 10, closing comments. I have one brief comment. Um, I watched the planning board meeting on May 21st and there was no representative from this board present. No representative. I think from a point of courtesy, uh, that's not good. And I think that if we have individuals representing us on boards, accepted extremists, and when another one of us could be asked to step in, I think that's uh, not acceptable. And I was not happy to see that. Thank you. Any further closing comments? I, uh, I just want to say we went over to the um, Smutty Nose uh, yeah, you and opening the other day with, with a number of the other boards. <laughs> and it, it is nice to see. Oh, yeah. That facility there and that facility in Hampton. And uh, I know Fred had some, some uh, dealings with them early on to try to entice them to come to town. And I think we ought to see more of that. I think it's a great facility. They're going to be a great neighbor, and I welcome them to town. Yeah. You can't add more to Smutty Nose coming to town for closing comments. A motion to adjourn? <laughs> <laughs> I will so move, Mr. Chairman. Seconded by Mr. Waddell. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Seconded by Mr. Waddell. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you.